Hi, welcome to my channel. One thing I find myself doing quite often is creating buttons for a visual interface, so I thought I would do a tutorial on it. Before I get started, I would like to thank the creator of the YouTube channel, Tech with Tim. I watched his video, How to Create a Button in Pygame, and ended up using a couple of his functions. Anyway, he's got a great channel, and I've left a link to his video in the description below. I've also put all my code up on GitHub. Here's what I'm going to do in this video tutorial. One, I'm going to show the finished program what it looks like. Two, I'm going to go over the idea behind the code. And three, then I will step through the code. Here's the finished program. As you can see, it's just four buttons. Two of them display the primary and background colors. I haven't really implemented a lot of functionality here, but hopefully it's enough just to give you the idea. Two, the idea behind the code. Here's a 60,000 foot overview of the code. First of all, we initialize Pygame, then our buttons. After that, we call the main function and begin detecting events, such as mouse clicks. Finally, depending upon the input, we draw the output. In the events function, we discover which events occurred and handle them. You're familiar with this idea. Depending upon which button you press, different things happen. For example, if the user clicks the button labeled random, then the window begins filling with circles of a randomly chosen color and size. After we finished with the events, then we draw our buttons on the screen. Three, stepping through the code. Let's take a closer look at the code starting with the init function. In the initialization function, we initialize Pygame and tell it how wide and high to draw the outermost window. We name the display, in this case I used simple interface, and I set up the font. As you can see, I used the default font and set the size to 35. Also, clock is initialized so I can control how frequently the screen is redrawn. After the variables have been initialized, I call the main function. Whenever I'm setting up a window using Pygame, all the main functions look the same. There is a while loop where the loop control variable is available throughout the instance. This is important because we want to set the loop variable to false when the user tries to close the window or when they press the escape key. There are, however, a couple of things to note about the events method. Mouse button down. For each button in our list of buttons, we check to see if the mouse is over that button. If so, the button has been clicked and we need to carry out the associated task. So, since the main window is technically a button, but we don't want it to show the mouse click animation, we exclude it. Next, we click to see if the user has checked the random button. If so, we toggle the value between paint random and stop adding. Paint random, as the name suggests, adds circles to an array, which will be displayed when we call draw. I haven't talked about the button class yet, so let's take a look. As you can see, the initialization method, the constructor, is simple. Everything here is self-explanatory. We have the isOver function, again thanks to Tim. His code is very straightforward. Now let's look at draw. One thing I really like about Tim's code here is the option to draw an outline around the buttons. As you see, I'm using it, but it is simple to remove. Another thing I like about this draw function, it looks to see if a button has a label. If it doesn't, that's fine, execution moves on. But if the text has been provided, then that text is rendered. It's an elegant bit of code. Okay, almost done. Let's talk about how I draw the random circles. To add a circle, I generate a range of values that represent the position of the circle, the size of the circle, and the color of the circle. Notice that the circle is not drawn when these attributes are generated. Instead, its attributes are appended to a list, a list of circles. Then, in the draw method of outer window, we just draw the elements of the list. If we don't want anything to be drawn, then we click the clear button and call a function that will assign an empty list to the list of circles. Thanks again to Tim for posting his code. Thanks for watching. Let me know what kind of videos you would like to see. I've been thinking of doing something on genetic algorithms, or perhaps I could step through something more basic like a flashcard program. I'd be really interested in what you would find most useful. In any case, if you've gotten something from this video, please help the channel grow by liking and subscribing. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, good coding.